Hi there. Um, my name is Tupi, and today I want to introduce you briefly into the the science of synergetics, which is an empirical look at the the ge geometries of time space. So. I did some videos before where I explained some critiques of the conventional ideas of space without time and all that. And today I just want to focus on the positive story, not the negative. So I'm going to skip all that stuff we learned in school about abstractions and we get right down to things you can try to try yourself with stuff you have lying around because it works everywhere so um, if we look at the world and at the universe we will see one shape manifested again and again and this one is uh, more or less spherical so if we look at a sphere like this one as we're used to them it looks very smooth and very simple and this one looks very well it actually mirrors everything because it's so finely uh, finely tuned it's so many small parts that make up this sphere that you can get a very smooth sphere if we were able to look more closely at it with a microscope we'd see Oh, there's our one hour, one car per hour. Um, looking close at it, you see that there is a lot of space in between the places where things happen, like atoms. Lots of spaces in between. In this case, there's something in probably... No, this is actually not filled. So it's more like this and less like this with a core. Um, yeah, but any kind of object that you see is made up of little things that have a lot of space in between them. And if you look into the big, big scales of the universe, of the night sky, or the sun, and the earth, and the moon, and all these beautiful bodies, uh, they all tend to be spherical. So now what happens if we have one sphere on, a, on her own, on their own, they are very much unaware of what is going around and even actually it couldn't even be, um, it couldn't know it's there because there's no, no other that you could reflect upon. So if we have two of these and they start interacting they will always pull together uh, because of gravity and these things if you have a big ball like the earth around then that's pulling harder than these are but there is an attraction so to to look at that connection between the two we would just have to draw a line or make a so-called vector between the centers of the two spheres, going right through the point where they meet. Now these two, they built a, uh, they they are in unity. It's at least two parts. Oh, that's actually something I missed about the first sphere. Let's just jump back to that very quickly because if it is like this, that there is a sphere with an outside, then there's also and always with everybody an accompanying inside. So one is convex with a vertex, it dissipates energy, and the other one is convex. Co uh, con I'm sorry, concave, <laughs> which means with a cave, with a hole, so it collects energy. And both are the same thing, just turned in or out and now even a single sphere on her own would be twofold inside and outside 
if we have the two, they make a line and they can start interacting and getting to know one another. And in every connection we make, we will learn something new about ourselves as well. So these two can now move freely around one another. And if only if a third one comes by and they all start to meet, they make a triangle, a little eye that you can peer through. And However, wherever these three are oriented, they will always make an, a plane between them. Uh, and this is a structure where you have the first kind of closed circle. Every part holds the others. And in between is an eye, if you like, because the window comes from the eye. So now these three can still move like this. They can go in and out like this, evolve and devolve or something like that, like a torus. And that ends when a fourth sphere comes into the picture and they all meet, now making a pair of eyes, which soon turns into this, which suddenly gives us four eyes or if you want to have a Greek name for that, you could call it Tetrops. And this is the first place, the first time that we have an insideness and an outsideness. Both are part of it. And there's six connections between the spheres. Um, it's also just the beginning of a lot more, but a four-sided structure made of two pairs coming together. Not like this, but like this. Closest packed. So now, just to show a little more of that inner connection going on with something a little more, um, more sticky, we got these, which is just a one magnet and three non-magnets. We can play the same game. One sphere, here is your line, here is your plane, here is your pair of eyes, which folds up to give you four eyes. And if we wanted to, we could also go and do a blown up version of those vectors, like having the, the line and then the cat, always good to have a cat. <laughs> so these three interact to form a, a stable triangle. And we notice that all the angles are similar. They are all 60 degrees. And if we can call 90 degrees a right angle, I would say let's call this a left angle. Now with the next sphere, we get a pair of eyes and then eventually we get four eyes. So this is six sticks, six vectors and four corners and four eyes. Now if we were to put this little tetra on a few more spheres I guess I might have a model of that with the spheres. Uh, I got a few of these things, but I don't see that one right now. Anyways, if we have another layer of spheres underneath, underneath, sorry, we get this, which is still the same kind of structure. Woo! Magnetism. Funny thing. Same structure, same overall shape, yet a higher frequency. So the frequency comes from the intervals, which are the valleys between the spheres. So in this case of our first frequency, we only have one interval 
we have one little valley between the two spheres. With the next higher layer we have the first kind of four spheres resting on another six on the bottom. The bottom looks exactly like this so you can just see for yourself and looking at that we notice it is made up of the top tetra our little tetrops and if we take that away there's another three of them underneath Now if we do connect them as they were before, link them up, now remove the outer ones, you see there's another shape which is the second one in our little family of shapes. It's an 8i. It's made up of twice as many parts or twice, twice as many sticks and six balls. And the volume of this, if this is your unit of volume, is this is one and this is four. It's only two times the, par the parts and it's four times the volume. And it's a really nice structure if you ever need something that has a bottom and the top, like a house or something, lots of space to get into and out to, and actually more space than you would have in a cube, but that's a, just a side note today. Now, if those were still there, one, two, This is a trunk, a truncated version of that one. We, it's like we cut the, the big one at that plane, in that plane, and what we get is a small one which is still the same, just smaller. Whoops. And we still have the trunk of the other one. Now that one that works wherever you go. If you cut this or if you move that plane away from that point it goes bigger and if you go towards it it got, gets smaller and from that point on it go, goes into the opposite, the inside out. So what is in that point where everything meets? That's the kind of zero point of this. It's a zero volume. And that, if we only look at our spheres, is what I like to call the mother of all spheres. Bucky Fuller called it the vector equilibrium, which is a good name because it is a shape where every way in it, everywhere you go is the same distance. Um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to say about all of these shapes and especially about this one. Now if we look at that blown up with this, you see in, in this case here we get the little spheres sitting in the points where we have the interaction of our little umbilical cord here. So there's still a sphere here, there's still a sphere there. They meet in the center of this and if you count all of them it's a dozen and there's a, a, another one in the center which has an inside as well. So there's two sort of inside and outside, a nucleus in the center. Now if you were to increase the frequency of this radially it would still hold true that with every step further 
the, the, the edge distance is also increased by the same factor. It's everywhere the same way and this kind of structure that time and space in unison can create is called in synergetics the isotropic vector matrix. Matrix is the mother. Isotropic means it's identical and vectors are what it what connects the event places, the corners, the the dots. So for these things it doesn't matter what you make them from. This can still move it's a it's not a static or solid thing it's a dynamic thing it's actually a tensacrity it's a an, an integrity of the tension in it but what happens if you remove the the core of this the nucleus you only get 12 of the outer ones left and i got a little model for you with just to show that little is maybe relative because this is of all those now the biggest and now you you see this is still our vector equilibrium uh, like that with hey the chicken eats my mater what are you doing off 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 <laughs> always good to invite a friend okay so if if you ever make one of these or get to look at one of them what you see is there is still the same four planes the four sides that the tetra has but they are all going through one point and the planes themselves are made up of hexagons of six triangles which is a very close approximation to a circle so there's four of those four planes which are the four planes of space-time uh, like this now I fold up the planes and I can stick them together like this and oops, if I unfold them I drop a lot of little spheres but you see it's four of these and you just fold them together to get that structure it's always that kind of same fractal idea. Now with this one we focus only on the outer eight eyes of our vector equilibrium. Only those are relevant right now because on this we just take out this, the core. Alright so I take out one, two, three, four, five, and six of these vectors that went both ways so it was 12 in the inside a dozen vectors from the core to the dozen spheres and inside I got this little thing which is again just a four eyes but made up of beads with a string so it's a tensacrity now this is has got left the, the place of closed systems and now moves into the area of transforms because now we have a lot of open sides a lot of open squares as it seems why are there squares never mind next time next story um, here if we move this if I hold it if I don't hold it it falls together right so there's nothing there but if I hold it like this, and gravity assists me, we can see the top and the bottom triangle, left angle, are pointing two different ways. And in this pl place, it's the farthest away. So there's your point of equilibrium, the balance point. But the balance is always dynamic. It goes from one side to the other. And this one dances. Fuller called this the jitterbug dance. I would like to call it a dance of the Tao, but you can call it whatever you like. You could call it an electromagnetic wave pattern because it's a wave behavior that goes in all directions from that center point and it's symmetric in, in every way. 
and if we were to stop this in that resting point where it kind of wants to go not moving that bottom thing but just here now it holds by itself because now everything is triangulated and what we get is again our friend the eight eyes octops great structure so from here we could turn this a little and open up the thing and you remember our friend from before this is the trunk we had before and there's still the same eight eyes in between here and this holds even though there's not really much to it it doesn't hold everything it only is paper and there's no glue and nothing but maybe we can imitate that there used there would be a tetra on top and it's a full thing again um, continuing that folding we get here this which is a two frequency left angle there's one two three four and this is two times two is four which is a triangle number now folding this up we get our first incarnation of that cycle the tetra now everything is fourfold and it's very dense and this is a place where space can actually f go beyond that point and fold the other way so you have that moment of inside of out and inside and outside like if you take your glove of one hand and put it on the other positive negative whatever left and right and from there the thing now if we were to invert it but anyways the thing can unfold again and now it's pointing in the same direction that's not how it is this is it now it's our vector equilibrium again and that goes to show another way how that how those two primary structures are related but there's a third structure in that family which is in this point when you have not the the furthest distance between the parts but a little closer together I could take these sticks and put them those six that I took out I could put them as diagonals in here and the thing the, the, the paper thing would hold again because then it would have this shape which is a 20 eyes an icosops it's a very versatile structure and the most popular uh, use of synergetics in the world today because people use it to make geodesic domes like the one we're sitting in which is the same thing just cut off one corner put it like this and people like to cut off things so there's a lot of space on the ground because the earth holds it but even the big one that we're sitting in is just pipes with a piece of string in the corner and you can fold it together because there's nothing that holds the shape the part of the shape itself and since we disintegrated the shape we cut off one part of it there's no triangles in the bottom unless you put it on the ground it actually stays in holds. but it is a very dynamic state it's a very dynamic structure it's like a balloon filled with air and you could also keep on folding in corners of it and get other shapes here so that goes to show the the transform the transformation of the dance of the Tao, the jitterbug which is all these three structures within this one sh shape that combines them all and Fuller called this the the, uh, the the hey don't eat the magnets. <laughs> he called this the um, the coordinate system of nature. You know, nature always takes the shortest route of least resistance. We wonder how because in our framework it doesn't exist. This is the 
framework where every way is the shortest of le least resistance. And if we were to look closer on it, I, I'm going to show you very quickly, just so you, you know what I'm saying. Is it's better to make your own and get a grip on them because a picture won't transmit the spaciousness of this. But this is our little tetra that we had in the beginning. And then there's that one shared point. And there's a, another tetra exactly inverted on the other side. And this is one, two, three, four axes like the four sides of space time <laughs> and that if you know the volume of one of them is one those is eight and the in between the open space in between is always half of one of these eight eyes so that is four tetra volume four and this is half of it it's two you got six of those, like the six sides of the cube, which is a dozen, plus eight is a dozen and eight, which is translated to decimal, now I'm struggling, me and numbers, not good, what's that, can you help me? <laughs> uh, Twenty. So. This has a volume of 20 and going down a little to inflate it like we had with that dance of the Tao, that point where it's compressed just a little, like this, it's a little less volume, 18.52, but it's only five times the parts of this, it's 30 sticks and six. So all together you get a lot of space in this for a lot for very little that you put in. You still get a lot of space in this for much less to put in. And you get very little space with this. This is the smallest space you can get, whatever size we're talking about. The biggest surface. And all these structures have different properties that you can use if, if you have a problem, you want a house, you want much space, go for a big thing with little surface. You won't have as much heating problems. If you have uh, the opposite, you want a fireplace, take this. Take that 4i, invert it. You get a fireplace that creates char whenever you use it because the stuff that you burn doesn't go to ashes but stays as carbon. Put this around and it gets stable, it won't fall over. This captures the heat and gives it off for longer. This is embers glowing until you quench them. And yeah, this is maybe one thing we could do differently to have that climate change problem turn into a change of climate. Anyways, we could go on for a long time with this because there's a lot to say, but there's a lot that has been discovered already by Fuller and others. Look into that, look into a Fuller explanation by Amy Edmondson and Fuller Synergetics. Ask me if you got any questions I'm here and I like to share this because I think we can change this world if we stop thinking of it in things that are made up in terms of abstractions and start looking at what there is and what we can do with that because there's a lot we can do with it. So this is the family of polyops, incarnate polyform of time and space and that's our friend the chicken and we're checking out. Have a good time. <laughs>